What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we gotta talk about what happened at this year's Clash at the Castle. Shout out to everyone that was rocking with me on the In the Clutch page. Uh, Dub would have been there, but he's at a track meet with the kids. So shout out to Dub, uh, you know, doing this thing with the kids, and shout out to uh, Dub's kids, Mariah, Isaiah, Josiah um you know getting it done out there on the track field man so that's the only reason why he wasn't part of the stream but he would have been there um and i think he would have enjoyed the show because tonight's show or today since we're watching it you know during the daytime they they were watching it during the nighttime however you want to say it <clears throat> this show was great it lived up to the hype of the first class at the castle and i think um, they did a good job tonight. The matches were on point. There wasn't really a bad match per se, in my personal opinion. Um, some matches I cared more than others, but the crowd definitely kept the matches that, you know, kind of was losing a little bit of the energy or was kind of going slow. The crowd kept up the in energy. Shout out to Glasgow, Scotland. Y'all showed out. <clears throat> Y'all showed, once again, some of these American cities that WWE be going to, how to show out for a wwe event y'all showed out and once again um it seems like these these foreign uh shows with that wwe does ple's at they be bringing the energy you know and, and I, I love to see that it makes the show that much better so we got to talk about obviously what everyone is talking about we're going to get into this first because this is what everyone was speculating this is what everyone was concerned with was Drew McIntyre going to walk out his home country, his home, you know, his home area as the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion, man, against Damian Priest, who, by the way, the odds look stacked against him. You know, he didn't have Judgment Day with him to back him up to uh, tonight because Drew beat Finn Balor, which means Judgment Day was barred. So he came into hostile territory tonight <clears throat> in a situation where it was going to be tough for him to win because nobody was rooting for Damian Priest I was telling the people in the chat this situation reminds me of when CM Punk was facing John Cena at Money in the Bank 2011 in that match that championship match against John Cena and John Cena came out there and he was booed to oblivion and CM Punk was the hometown hero in Chicago. This gave me the same vibe. When Drew came out there, they had the a band, a Scottish band for Drew to come out there. He came out there. Crowd went crazy. Huge pop. I mean, it was no denying it. They wanted Drew to win. If you was in that building, you wanted Drew to win. They were so loud that when Damian Priest came out there, they were chanting Drew's names over Damian Priest's entrance theme music. That's how loud they were. I don't think I've ever seen that where a crowd, they'll maybe boo over the theme music, but to be chanting over the theme music and you can hear them, fantastic. This lets you know Damian Priest was in a very tough situation. So the question became, will Drew get his crowning moment? <clears throat> And it looked like the pieces were all lined up um, when they started off the match. Um, Drew had a lot of intensity. He was he was moving. He was he wasn't giving Damian Priest any ounce of energy to rest. He was overpowering Damian Priest, and the crowd was loving it. You know, the crowd was definitely letting it be known they did not want Damian Priest to win. They were giving him the middle finger. They even, you heard a bisexual Undertaker chant. Don't think that was going to be in my bingo card for 2024, but hey, it was there. And Damian Priest had to pretty much deal with that. Deal with the, the crowd just not letting up. Letting it be known that he wasn't going to win, right? At one point in the match, and this is when things uh, started to change, um, especially in, in the sense of what Damian Priest was able to do afterwards. Damian Priest was going for his, you know, I believe it's like a springboard off like the the second rope 
over the top rope that he likes to do but he ended up slipping his foot got caught between the top rope and the second rope so when he came down his foot and ankle and leg was wrapped up on the top rope to all the weight you know of him flipping over and his leg got caught um and you know he was kind of stuck upside down for a little bit and it it looked kind of rough the way his leg came down it looked like he may have tweaked it or uh, tweaked his ankle i'm not sure but uh it took drew being the one to actually get him get him free but of course he had to sell it so while he's upside down drew starts you know fake stomping him and then the ref's trying to get him away, so they cut away to Drew, but the ref wasn't able to get him out, so Drew had to get him out, and he said, I can't win the match if you're stuck in between the ropes. So, you know, I like how Drew kind of played that off, but you can tell he wasn't the same because it's different when a, a wrestler is doing an injury spot, you know, especially a heel wrestler. You normally don't see heel wrestlers doing the injury spot. You usually see the baby faces doing the injury spot in a sense um you know to try to try to you know have you know get get that comeback energy like oh all right the baby face trying to fight for it underneath granted drew is operating more like a you know a tweener but we know in scotland he was going to be the overwhelming baby face so it would have made sense for drew to get slightly hurt but overcome it you know to beat damian priest but in this situation i don't think this was a storyline i don't think this was a work i think he legitimately got caught up in the ropes as you saw and it looked kind of brutal and he was hurt for the rest of the match you can clearly tell he was in pain he even hit a razor edge to um drew mcintyre a one-legged razor edge you can tell he was in a lot of pain and i think they had to call a lot i think they called an audible here to kind of adjust some stuff to kind of keep him off his leg as much as possible. Um, at one point, they go to the outside, and Drew hits a Claymore kick to Damian Priest through the barricade. I don't think I've ever seen that before. We've seen so many barricade spots, but that was a, pool, a cool visual to see that. And once again, the crowd's getting amped up. The crowd is behind Drew. You can tell we're getting to the climax of the match. Um, I want to say there was another situation where... Damien got hit with a claymore it was his second claymore kick it was out of nowhere got hit with a claymore kick for a very when i say very close three count i mean it was 2.9999 seconds of a three count that i thought the match was over it came out of nowhere one two he barely got his shoulder up that was very impressive how they timed that one. That was a really close near fall. Crowd was chanting, this is awesome. This was a great match. And the story they were telling now that Damien's hurt, he's trying to stay alive. And Drew looks like he's getting closer to finally having that moment. So, of course, you knew at some point the referee was going to get knocked down. And that's exactly what happened. And as that happened, guess what? Drew hits his third Claymore kick on Damian Priest. The match is over, essentially. That's three Claymore kicks on Damian Priest. Uh, Drew pins him. One, two, three, four, five. Crowd is chanting, you know, the you know, counting the numbers. Then you see it's a wide angle shot. You don't see who it is, but you see someone with a referee shirt. So you assume, assume it's official. Slide in. Run down the ramp and slide in. You don't see their face when they get into the to the ring. They count the one. They count the two. And then you realize, wait a minute, this ref got some Jordans on. Wait a minute, you realize the back of his hair is slicked back. He counts the one, the two. And then he stops counting the three. And Drew's looking at him. And it's CM Punk. CM Punk came out there as the ref and counted two but didn't count the three, and Drew was pissed, the crowd was pissed, Drew gets up, looks like he's about to strangle a CM Punk, and then CM Punk hits him with a low blow, oh my gosh, he gets out the ring, Damian Priest capitalizes, hits the south of heaven one more time, because he hit one early in the match, and the ref comes back in for the one, the two, and the three. 
And Damian Priest is still your world heavyweight champion as CM Punk is embracing some fans that are out there chanting his name, but everyone else is sick. They're silent. Do you there's close-up shots of people just can't believe that Drew McIntyre got screwed out again of his second clash at the castle. And this time it was because of CM Punk. When I say the crash out that Drew McIntyre is about to have is going to be fantastic. To me, this was the better story all along. Having Drew crash out because CM Punk has screwed him over again for the World Heavyweight Championship is nothing but poetic. And I can't... I cannot wait to see what he has to say on Monday Night Raw and or do. Because we're getting that much closer. We're getting that much closer to them finally having a match and all hell breaks loose. This was great. I know some of y'all are upset. But once again, the greater story here. CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. Honestly, it's bigger than the World Heavyweight Championship because they hate each other. And now it's we've gotten to that point. This was great. Fun match. Love this main event. The, this was the right outcome. I love this, man. Definitely love this. Um, I want to mention a couple of the other matches. Uh, definitely want to talk about the, not going into great detail, but the women's WWE Championship match between Bayley and Piper Niven. I think Piper Niven had a great showing. I kind of figured, a lot of us figured that Piper Niven wasn't going to win, but it was cool to see her in this. I think this was her biggest profile match on WWE's main roster. She got a good hometown response. Her moves looked effective and, and brutal. And I love what they did with her there. We knew Bailey was going to retain. But I had to, you know, at least give the proper shout out to a solid match. And hopefully they continue to do more with Piper Niven going forward. Um, Sammy versus Chad for the IC title. Definitely go watch that match. That match was fantastic. Them in-ring wrestling was great. But the storytelling of this match was so good. And we're getting that much closer to... Uh, Chad Gable and Otis finally going at it in the sense of Otis actually finally putting hands on Chad Gable. We saw we was that close to it. The crowd was really pro Otis, but we didn't get it. It's going to happen. Ultimately, Sammy ended up winning again, but I do not think this is over. Even though Sammy said, that's it. I'm done. You get no more opportunities. I don't think that's the case. I do think Chad's going to set up something with the Creed brothers and Ivy going forward. And I think he's going to try to weasel his way to get one more match against Sammy. And I think Sammy will finally lose it this time in Toronto at Money in the Bank. I think that's what's possibly going to happen. But we will see. Either way, the ultimate goal is to get uh, Chad Gable and Otis to maybe face for the IC title. That is... To me, I think is a, a, a really good uh, SummerSlam uh, match. So I'm hoping that does happen. But that was a fun match as well. Really, really good match. Great storytelling. Great in-ring psychology. Go watch that match if you haven't. This was really fun. Um, we also got to talk about the triple threat match between um, uh, Jade. The team of Bianca and Jade. Zoe and Shayna Baszler. And Alba Fire and... and uh, uh, Isla Dawn. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't really excited about this match. But obviously the crowd pro Alba Fire and Isla, Isla Dawn. They were pro them as is expected from them being from Scotland. And the match started off slow for me. But it definitely started to pick up towards the middle and the end of the match. And I was really surprised. But someone made a very good point that... The only way Jade and Bianca lose is if it is if it's a situation where they are in a triple threat match and they don't get pinned. And that's what happened here. Alba Fire and Isla Dawn end up winning and becoming the new women's tag team champions to a huge pop, very huge pop, very great moment for them. Bade and uh, Bade, Jade and Bianca, they never got pinned. So I do expect them to run it back at some point. 
question is, will they drop the titles to them again? Did they just WWE give them the titles just for this particular moment? I don't know, but it was a great moment for them. And I, I thought that was dope. Once again, the crowd really built up the energy towards the end of the match. And they got a huge pop. And that was dope to see. And I do want to talk about the I Quit match between Cody Rhodes and AJ Styles. This was what an I Quit match is supposed to be. This was fun. This was entertaining. This was probably one of the best ways to start the show. When I say I hadn't seen an I Quit match like this in a while where blood was being used and it made sense. Oh, this was fun. This was fun, bro. I I don't even know what to say. Both of these guys was bleeding. Both of these guys were brutal. Hell, the majority of this match, Cody Rose was the aggressor. Cody Rhodes was on the offense. Cody Rhodes was talking shit. He was beating the crap out of AJ Styles until AJ hit the brain bruster on Cody on the announce table. Brutal spot. And then at that point, um, that's when Cody started bleeding. Cody was the first one to bleed. And I was like, okay, I love to see this. They weren't even bleeping out what the crowd was chanting. And this was so damn good. I love this. Um, there was even a point where... Um, Cody's mom was at the front row, was sitting front row, and you know how Cody feels about his mom, and AJ was over there antagonizing his mom, beating up Cody, and antagonizing his mom, saying, you allow, this is, this is your fault, you're allowing your son to get beat up like this, to the point, to the point where AJ comes over there, and disrespecting Cody's mom, he even puts his hands on Cody's mom, and Cody's mom starts slapping him multiple times. And, you know, and, and it was crazy because this is after Cody had been handcuffed and beaten down. He's handcuffed. So, you know, AJ Styles taunting and disrespecting his mom. Cody was able to, you know, kind of free himself a little bit from the handcuffs because they were behind his back. And then from there, Cody turned up and he he was not playing no games. He ended up busting open AJ Styles after he got out of the handcuffs with the handcuffs himself. He used it as a weapon. Ended up busting open AJ Styles. He, AJ Styles with multiple three um, Cody cutters. Love to see it. And throughout this match, crowd is pro Cody. Just electric. Like they just, they let it be known Cody was their guy. Um, I want to say at one point, Cody ends up putting AJ Styles in those same handcuffs, cuffed him to the rope, and started wearing him out with a steel chair. I mean, beating the crap out of him. And once again, this was cool to see Cody being this aggressive, this, this focused, this angry. This is what we need, especially when somebody's out here trying to take you down and, and make you say, I quit. He showed no mercy here. Um, there was at one point where Cody picked up the steel steps and said, all right, I'm about to just bash your skull in AJ Styles is handcuffed to the ropes. There's nothing he can do. He says, I quit. The match is over. He's about to bash his head in, but then he looks at his mom and obviously he knows what she was, you know, what AJ Styles was doing to his mom, the disrespect. He looks at his mom. He looks back to steel chips, steel steps. He looks at my boy, uh, AJ Styles. And he still proceeds to bash him over the head with the steel steps. Fucking love it. This is what I want to see from my fucking world champion. Right there. Keep that same energy. And he's going to need it. Because I've heard the rumors and the speculation that Solo may be the next thing for Cody to have to deal with. And guess who came down the ramp as Cody was walking up the ramp celebrating? Solo Sokoa. He came out there by himself. He looked right at Cody. Then Tamatanga and Tongaloa proceed to attack Cody Rhodes and Solo. They're jumping Cody Rhodes. And that's when Randy Orton music hit and KO comes out there. And then they all start brawling and they beat him backstage. They he's throwing hands, feet, don't matter. They all start brawling with the bloodline and they fight them backstage. And you have Randy and Kevin Owens trying to help up Cody Rhodes, but some of y'all mentioned that Randy Orton, while he was helping up Cody Rhodes, he was looking at that WWE Undisputed Championship, and I do think 
at some point we're gonna get that feud that's going to be money that's going to be a money feud because the history there seeds were being planted but it does seem like the bloodline is particularly maybe solo wants to have a shot potentially at the wwe undisputed world heavyweight championship well i mean the wwe under wwe undisputed championship my bad so i don't know we'll see how that goes but that looks like solo may be the next solo in the new bloodline they may now now they may end up targeting cody rhodes so we will see but overall this was a great show i love this show clash at the castle definitely did his thing for a 2024 i'm looking forward to the next clash at the castle whenever they do another one this was fantastic if i had to rate the show on a scale of one to ten i'm gonna go ahead and give this show a solid solid eight and a half nine this was a very great show enjoy clash at the castle and i'm looking forward to seeing the crash out of drew mcintyre and now everything else is going to play out going forward on monday night raw and smackdown so comment down below let me know did you guys enjoy the show what you rate the show on a scale of one to ten also what was your favorite match from tonight's show but i appreciate all the love and support y'all have shown on the channel road to 150k and i'm still young speed the youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking it with me see y'all next one peace